Hi, welcome. We are now on our sixth video of our series for atomic theory and structure. Now, this is unit four. Unit five, we'll deal with the models of atomic theory and atomic structure. For now, we've been looking at changes in the subatomic particles and how that impacts the element. Um, so we were doing a weighted average of isotopes. Remember, isotopes have the same number of protons, but they have different elect or neutrons, therefore they have a different mass number. Okay, so a different mass number. That's key. Now, the math numbers aren't always quite as exact as we would, you would think as they were in that last one, which could probably explain a subtle difference from what's actually on the periodic table. You notice this gives a more exact mass number. So it gives us three isotopes of neon, 19.99, 20.99, and 21.99. Now, to calculate a weighted average, Remember, we're going to multiply each of these, not by their percent. Instead, we're going to take the percent and divide it by 100 to get it on a fraction of a whole. So that would be 0 0.9092 if I divided that number by 100. 0 0.0025. should put zeros in front of those decimals. That makes them a little clearer. This is 0 0.0882. Three. So if you did that multiplication, and then if we added those up, we would get the number that would be put on the periodic table. And in this case, our algebra gives us 20.17 atomic mass units. And hopefully this makes a little bit of sense, because if this one that's 20 is 90% abundance, you would expect this number to be very close to that 19.99, and indeed it is. Now the next one's a little trickier. This time we are given the mass numbers and the atomic mass, so we already have our weighted average, and this time the unknown is the percent abundance. So there's just a little bit of algebra to this one. So let's write down what we would have done. We would have taken the mass number times the percent abundance. I don't know what it is. So X is a handy symbol to put in when I don't know a number. Plus 109 times the abundance, and they're not likely to be equal. And so I'm gonna put a Y there instead of another X. And if I had done that, if I'd known those abundances, I would get 107.87 atomic mass units. Now, right now, I have one equation, but in that equation, I have two unknowns. And I don't know about you, but it's pretty much impossible to have a singular answer to an equation that has two unknowns in it. So we need another equation that relates x and y. And since we're talking about fractions, x plus y would equal 1. So now I have two equations. And there are many, many, many ways to solve this. Some of you have already done this in algebra. Uh, I could use the method of substitution. I could solve this for y. I'd say y is equal to 1 minus x, and I could plug that in there. I can actually do matrices, you can do it graphically. But when I have a very simple equation like this bottom one, I prefer to do it this way. I'm going to multiply this x by negative 107. Now, as long as I multiply every one of these by that same number, whoops, sorry, I looked up and grabbed the wrong number. As long as I multiply everything through by minus 107, I still have an equality maintained. Now I can add these two together, solving simultaneous equations, and 107x minus 107x cancels. 109 minus 107 is 2y, and then I get 0.87. Now to solve that for y, I divide both sides by 2, 
and when I do that I get 0 0.435. Now if you're struggling with this right now you might want to watch the video again but remember we're going to be doing some homework in the classroom and I'll be there to help you out. Now that's its fraction abundance out of one. It didn't ask for the fraction abundance, it asked for the percent. So I have to multiply by 100. So silver 109 has an abundance of 43.5%. And since the sum of percents have to equal 100, you could actually do it over here if you wanted to because the sum of fractions have to equal one. It, it, it's irrelevant what you choose. You'll get the same answer, assuming your algebra is right. So the sum of my percentages have to equal 100. So that means that my silver 109 is 50, or 107, excuse me, is 56.5%. Okay? That's as tricky of algebra as we're going to come across in quite a while. And so we want to practice that one a few times and watch the video again if you need it, and we'll work on this in class some more. All right, now, what about the changes in the number of electrons? Now, electrons are negative particles, remember, and when we change our number of electrons, we form what are called ions. That doesn't mean I'm going to be keeping my eye on you, uh, during class, but um, yeah, it does. I am going to keep my eye on you and make sure you're working hard on your homework and that you don't need my help. So ions are particles. They have to have the same protons, or again, we don't have the same element. But what we can do is either gain electrons or lose electrons. Now that gets kind of tricky because we're gaining and losing negative charges. And then we're going to use this relationship that my count of protons minus my count of electrons will give us that ionic charge. So we have two scenarios. If my number of protons is greater than my number of electrons, well, we're not changing my number of protons. So the only way protons could be bigger than electrons is if I lost electrons. So that's loss of electrons. And there is going to be an excess positive charge. So we have a positively charged ion when we lose electrons. And we call that a cation. Now, Ms. Marusic taught me a cool way to help you guys remember that. Other than the fact that cats are like really cool and positive to own, but not everybody thinks that, so I can't use that. But if you look at it and kind of spell out the letter C, A, and you notice how that T looks a little bit like a positive sign? Ion. So C, A, positive ion. If you kind of envision that T as a positive. Now, if my protons are less than my electrons, and again, we can't be changing our protons to make ions because then it's not the same substance. It's not the same element. So this happens when there is a gain of electrons. Now I have excess negative charge. And we call that an anion. And again, the, a nice little trick for memorizing that is a negative ion. So hopefully that helps you out there. Now, bear in mind, our number of protons is staying constant. What's happening is that our electrons are either going up to make a negative ion, or they're being lost, which would bring more protons and electrons to make a positive ion. So, but it is only that gain or loss of electrons that does it. We're not changing protons. And I just really want to emphasize that to you because that's a, a very common misconception. Now, a way to do this and at that point we will go on to the next video but let me show you this number line and that might help uh, quite a few students do this i don't talk about a charge being more positive or more negative i typically talk about it in terms of the negative because we're gaining and losing negatives so i ask myself is it more negative or less negative so if i'm looking at something like sr2 plus i would ask myself is this charge more negative than strontium 
Strontium has a charge of zero. We don't usually show it, but I wanted to make a point there. So is it more negative or less negative? Well, it's less negative. If it's less negative, that means I must have lost electrons. And in this case, I must have lost two electrons. Now, what if I had what we call phosphide? When it's a non-metal and it lo loses electrons, when it becomes an anion, uh, we change its ending to IDE. We don't do naming for a little while, but it's nearly impossible uh, not to do it without a little bit of naming sneaking in on the side. So, all right, so we look at this charge and don't ask yourself about positive negative, only frame it in the sense of the negative. And if it is more negative, that means it must have gained electrons. And in fact, in this case, it must have gained three electrons in order to be a negative three charge. So sometimes that number line really helps. And if you need to do a quick brain dump on the top of a quiz or a worksheet or a test, you know, you can go ahead and, and sketch out a number line like that. Now we'll be evaluating more ions and the symbols that we can use to describe a, a nucleus or an, an element in what may well be our last video coming up next. Until then, this is signing off.